everybody. Welcome to another episode of No Way Jose, starring the Boston Mass himself, 12-time IFBB Pro League champion, founding father of the 202 and 212 division. Please welcome from the great state of Massachusetts, Jose Raymond. What's up, Jose? What's happening, Ron? <clears throat> so uh, we had to get the Puerto Rico Pro preview because any true Jose Raymond fan would realize that even though your last name is Raymond, you are, uh, you are definitely 100% Puerto Rican, correct? hundred percent. Yes. Yes, Boricua. I am. I'm proud Boricua. of it. Boricua. Yeah. Yes. What is that? Is it Boricua frog? I can't even remember. Something like that. Anyway. No, it's a Puerto Rican. <laughs> well, I mean, they named it after something, but, uh, it's yeah. a cookie frog. The cookie cookie. frog. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I thought maybe you would won the show, but then I realized I don't think the show has been around that long, but you just said before we started recording, you did guest pose for the, the first year they did it. Yeah. In 2013, it was oh, called wow. the Wolf and Moria show Wolf it was Wolf. great okay yeah. so uh it wasn't a huge show um but man we, we had some the big story we're just going to start right out the bat hassan mustafa finally won a pro show uh this has been yeah. a long long time coming i've seen this guy compete probably 10 or 12 times over the past couple of years he's come yeah. so so close you know you've seen him many times too all this time what were you thinking this guy really needed to get over the edge and, and finally win a show obviously he did it so what do you what were you thinking all this time i was thinking he just needed to be in shape mm -hmm. and you know ultimately they did what he needed just so first of all i'm going to start off with um he unveiled that the guy that helped him was uh the cement factory there aj sims yeah i think that's his name and uh and they did exactly what needed to be done for him because he had so much muscle. He could afford to lose a ton to get in shape and still be the biggest guy, but still be the best guy. And, um, and that's exactly what he did. He, I would be surprised if he weighed much more than 230 pounds. You know, he, he was competing at 260 and, and um, he was probably 230. 230 you know low we, 230 we right. talked we did an interview thursday afternoon and he was 236 so i assume he dropped a few more pounds between then and yeah sunday oh did we do a friday i think we did a friday anyway yeah it was like a good 40 hours or so so yeah like you said two, he, was, he had to be about 260 for all those shows that we saw him at and just, yeah i bet yeah he, so. uh you know he was so big that he he could go up and down i mean i remember a few times he was like 276 a few days out from the show and you know the, the condition he's clearly better now but i mean he was in decent condition prior to that yeah what it did do was it like it brought him so close to that look that we all imagined mm -hmm. um i would like to see him a little fuller a little little um a little bigger because it's just weird for me to look at him and see him so shrunk down you know um but he you know he did what he had to w do to win um that said i think he's you know he's they, they, they got work to do as far as trying to figure out the exact recipe for him to be at his best and to be competitive at the olympia level because mm. he's got olympia muscle now it's just a matter of bringing condition and fullness i think if he was a little fuller the condition would have looked even better yeah uh, i saw it most in his legs because he had you know he's up there with rami as far as i was concerned as the most the freakiest quads in pro bodybuilding and as soon as i started seeing pictures on instagram I'm like wow his legs are way down they're still big yeah. don't don't get me wrong but compared to what they were and just overall when you're used to seeing him a certain size it was kind of like wow wow especially from the side like Theo's legs were bigger than his. Mm, uh, yeah. Theo came in second. Theo Laguerra. Um, yep, yep. He looked awesome. Um, you know, I think that was his best. He's competed in like four shows in a row, yeah. and he he continued to get better with each one. And um, that was a really good look for him. And to be honest, I wouldn't have really argued much if Theo won. I, I mean, I think that. I, I think he was more real condition, like like his glutes and his hams and his, he had striated quads, which which um, uh, uh, Hassan did too. But it was close. I think it was closer than people might think. 
If you saw the score sheets, you'd think it wasn't close at all because the sign had a perfect score. Yeah, well, they brought it down to a two-man call-out. Yeah. So clearly it was kind of close, you know. Oftentimes the score is misleading because you could have five judges that are flipping a coin, you know, and they all lean towards Hassan. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't a blowout. And, and, you know, heading, as I said, heading into the Olympia, he's going to have his hands full with uh, Hunter, uh, um, uh, Ian, uh, Nick Walker, th- those guys. Um, again, you know, I, I, I even even the last few blessings we saw, mm. I don't know that he would have beat blessing. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, so you know, I think AJ took him down as far as he needed to for this. I'm hoping that what we see, I, actually, he's got two more shows. He's doing uh, Orlando and he's doing Arnold UK. So he's not done. Oh, wow. Yeah, even though he's already qualified, he'd already committed to those. So, but I'm hoping to see some of that fullness back with that condition. Because man, that's that freaky size. When when you have that kind of size like he had, and if he could bring this type of condition somehow with it, you know, he he does, you know, we need to say that Olympia is going to be a little tough for him in some aspects because structurally he doesn't have the widest clavicles. They're they're average, you know, they're not like super wide like some guys. Yeah. And he still has issues with that, the lower part of his abdomen kind of bulging out at times. It's, yeah. It does, doesn't seem like distension. I don't know. I don't know really what's going on there with his midsection. Well, he's just so big. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I always said that about myself. It's like people all yelling about my stomach. I'm like, I, I was, you know, I always said 20 pounds of shit in a 10 pound bag. It, <laughs> it, something's going to protrude. And, and that's kind of what, uh, that's kind of what Hassan is. He's so big for his frame. Yeah. His, his hips are kind of wide too, yeah, which yeah. doesn't help. Um, but he has more muscle than anyone for a square inch. And I think it's awesome. And I think, you know, AJ has a good track record and that was their first time working together and he did a damn good job. Yeah. So the, you know, the more he gets to know him, the better they'll be able to refine things. And I, I expect good things out of him. Yeah, I can only imagine how little he had to eat because I remember a year or two ago, because you're good friends with uh, Chris Aceto, and I think you said, Chris said, this guy, you could put him on like almost, oh, we lost you there for a second. Oh. If you can hear me, yeah. Chris Chris had told you that even when they took his food down, very, very low calories, he still wouldn't lose any size or lose any weight. His body was meant to be huge. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You probably, you know, took his protein down probably having five or six ounces of protein six he told me it was six for a guy that big yeah. there you go mm-hmm. you know where you know when i was working with chris i was having 10 ounces of protein wow <laughs> you know? and i would assume uh you know hassan probably did too but you know again that's precisely what needed to be done yeah. and he basically had to starve him starve him and, and it worked yeah. that was definitely the best version of him um as far as what everyone has been wanting to see. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. the biggest by any stretch, but it was uh, definitely a more streamlined look for him. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'd love to see Rami do that. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know what the likelihood of that, but I'd love to see Rami like 270, just dried out, totally shredded. I mean, that's, that's my Rami fantasy. What I'd like to see him looking, looking like the Olympia, but good luck. Um, yeah, let's let's move on. Uh, let's give more props to this French kid, Theo. I call him kid because I think he's like 25. He's really a young guy. Uh, and, wow. and, uh, Theo Le Guerrier and um, yeah, these these Europeans this spring are really coming out coming out to play in the U.S. for in a big way. Theo, the two the two Andreas from Italy have been hitting a bunch of shows, but uh, yeah, that's the best the best I've seen from Theo. The conditioning, because I wasn't like, thrilled with his conditioning when I saw him at New York Pro. It was good. It was it definitely could have been better. Yeah, you, you remember, you were there. But uh, this I was this sitting is, with you. Yeah, so he was. I was a big fan of his. He Because he's a big dude, yeah. you know, tall, broad, wide, um, and he presents himself really well. He was very confident on stage. His presentation was really good. He had a really good posing routine, if you remember, in New York. Yeah. Um, he's a very likable guy. He, he draws your attention. So he's only getting better. Uh, I in that frame can hold a lot more even. Yeah. And yeah, his uh, his legs were bigger than Hassan's. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, they yeah. looked good on stage from what I could see. Yeah. But I mean, Hassan's legs like last year were <laughs> way bigger than that. So yeah. I think they really struggled to bring him down. I'm just curious to see what he looks like. By the time they get to Olympia, I think they'll have figured out the formula. But I think Theo, so too. Congratulations, Theo. Third place. This name was a total mystery to me. I just had to Google him and see where he turned pro. Jonas Giatras goes by CJ Giatras. Uh, never heard. Of, I, he won the super heavies at the 2019 nationals. I totally forgot, but uh, yeah. you, you've been following cause he's in a, he's an Aceto client too, right? Yeah. I met Jonas back in 2015, I guess posed in, um, in uh, uh, Utah. Yeah. And that, that's where he's from. And he was competing in the show hmm. and I'm backstage looking at him like, Holy cow. He has a frame on him and he's tall. He's got to be six feet tall he's big and really well put together yeah. so i mean that that show he smoked everyone and you know we had been talking he even talked about me helping him and uh and he i never ended up helping him but he went on you know did a few shows and he didn't win until 2019 at which point chris Cecito was helping him yeah. and he turned pro he didn't win the overall he won the supers but he, you could tell with just a little more muscle, a little more muscle, a little bit more, because his frame is so big. Um, but he was easily the best conditioned guy in the show. Hmm. And, and, and it, it showed. Like he, I think he beat Hassan in a few poses. Wow. And hmm. he, was, um, he was really good, really good. The only, you know, obviously a tall guy like that, his legs weren't as big as the other guys he was around. Mm. I would have liked to seen it come down to a three man call out there mm. at the end, but they made it, um, they made it clear that it was between Theo and, and Hassan, but he, he stood out to me a ton in the call out that he was in. Yeah. So, you know, the quality of it, the quality was just heads and shoulders above everyone that he was standing with. Yeah. So that's why I was like, ah, he, he, he probably belongs in that first call out. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. Like I said, once I, I haven't seen a lot of pictures. They just put up the pictures this morning on NPC News Online. But uh, very impressed with this guy. I hope he, I'm going to talk to him in a couple of days for an interview. So I'm going to find out what his plans are. I hope he hits a bunch of shows. He should. I saw all, all his progress pictures leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he had been sending them to me. And, uh, you know, just a good kid. Really, really good guy. Um, and he, you know, he was building confidence. He wasn't that confident. And then he started getting, and then just like two weeks ago, I, I'm like, you're ready now. Hmm. Wow. He, he, he was sharp, really hmm. sharp. Cool. All right. Fourth place, uh, Andrea Mozilla. They call him yeah. who's like Godzilla Mozilla. Yeah. Another big wide stacked dude from, uh, from overseas. Yeah. He's, I think that was his third show in a row too. He did the Cali. He did a, uh, what was, what was after that? Got a lot of damn shows coming. He did a bunch of shows in a row, but uh, pretty consistent with the condition. I think there was only one show. Was it the Cali or the, another one where he 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 blew it at the night show at the finals? He came in really soft, but uh, looked like he held his condition here from what I was seeing. Um, yeah, he's I mean, good. He's, he's good. good. I I I just um, I I haven't seen him in person yet, and something just is missing right now i don't know if it's his presentation hmm. his posing um where he's not as big he's not showing himself as good as he could be um i don't know what it is but i, I thought he ended up right where he should right you know his condition was better than everyone else and uh you know he was clearly better than everyone except for the top three right in fifth place, rounding up the top five, Max Charles with two X's. And Max is, he's another guy. He can hit show after show after show. Yeah. It's like those 90s guys did. Max will probably do, he'll probably do eight shows this year, I bet, before it's all said and done. I think he's already, I think he's already four or five shows in at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Max is great. You know, Max, he's big. He's got all the show stop for body parts. He's got crazy abs. Yeah. Awesome abs. Awesome packs arms shoulders um it's the same story over and ago from behind it's a completely different person yeah unless he is absolutely peeled out of his mind 
when he turns around, it's, it's, it's over for him. Um, but when he's in shape, like really, really top shape, yeah. it, it's less of a factor because he does have detail and he does have size and, um, you know, and God bless him. His legs have come up so much in the last few years yeah. and he is not young. Um, so I'm going to say 40, 43, 44 at this point. He's got, I would think so. I would yeah. think so. At least that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's done a hell of a job. Yeah. I remember, when he, I remember when his legs were, it wasn't that long ago, five, six, seven years ago, he had like no quad sweep. I was like this yeah. guy. And, I, and because he was already in his late thirties at that point, I'm like, he's never going to get it. He's, this is, this is the best he's ever going to look, but surprise, yeah. surprise, surprise, Max. Good for you, dude. Because I would credit some of that to, to Milos because it really didn't happen until Milos was working with him. Mm. It, se- it, it seems it, it, that's the way I'm um, interpreting it is that something happened. Maybe Milos changed the training style, a lot more volume. Um, I don't know what, but I know that once he was working with Milos, he changed a lot. Yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, it's, I think they were working together up until about uh, this point last year or close to it. Yeah. yeah but they were a good team. Uh, moving on to 212, my prediction to, for the win did not win. Uh, I had yeah. Bo, I had Bo Lewis winning easily. And on paper, yeah, he should have. But Oswaldo Gonzalez from Miami, who I've seen him many times, he's always in great shape. Mm-hmm. Uh, underrated, underrated guy, because I don't think anyone ever talks about him or you never hear about the guy as far as these podcast type of discussions, but pictures I saw, videos I saw, he blew it out of the water. He was, he was a very, very, very clear winner as far as I could tell. Well, he's underrated in the fact that people don't pick him to win shows. Yeah. Because clearly on paper, Bo should have beat him. Um, if Bo was at his all-time best, so he, I think he certainly would have beat him. Yeah. But that said... Um, Oswaldo beats good guys every time, every mm. show. He usually does the Tampa Pro. Yeah. I've seen him there, and he's always beating good guys, coming in top five, or I think maybe one year he came in second or third. Yeah. And um, he's got really good legs. He's really well put together. He's almost like a big classic physique guy. You know, mm. he's got a tight waist. He's definitely gotten bigger. In the, since the last time I saw him, yeah, I don't remember his legs being that big, right? And his legs great this weekend. Yeah, I just remember the one thing I always remember his consistently condition was perfect every time I've ever seen him because I think I only see him at the Tampa show, but I, I want to say I've seen him like there every year for the past few yeah. years. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Now, th- th- does that tell you something? Like condition wins. Yeah. So all you people out there listening. If you don't have the prettiest physique on earth, if you're not the biggest guy on earth, the one thing you can control is come in shape, come in the best condition possible. And like Oswaldo, you know, eventually every dog gets their bone, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, is that the way the saying is? That's good enough. You know sounds, I mean. That should be the phrase is every dog has his day, but I like the bone. I like the bone. Yeah. Before. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> bone gets a day, um, mm. but Oswaldo, you know, I love it. I love seeing it because he's one of those guys that, you know, I don't think he thinks he's going to win the Olympia, but he's going and he's, he's beat some really good guys, you know, and that's what it's all about being your best. So third place, uh, young guy, young Cuban guy, because you know, I'm married to the Cuban missile. So I always uh, give special shout outs. Emmanuel Rodriguez, who I saw for the first time at the Indy pro, very impressed and with him. New York. New York, he was not as sharp as he was in Indy because it was only right. a week apart, right? But still, yeah. you could see you could see the potential there. So this this he's a kid. He's he's in his twenties still, I believe. Definitely on the on the way up as a two twelve. This guy. You know, it's interesting because um, had he looked like he did in Indy, he may have won this show. Mm-hmm. He's thicker. He's thicker than Oswaldo. You know, he's he he may have won this show if he showed up like he did in Indy. Yeah. And I mean, I think Indy was certainly a tougher lineup yeah. and he placed third there. Right. Right. So, um, you know, that's another example. Show up at your best every chance you can, because you never know who's going to be there. Yeah. I mean, do you think people do you think anybody says, ah, I'm only going to cruise into this 85 percent, 
90%. No, but I think they get tired. They get mentally drained mm -hmm. and they start cheating or they stop doing cardio. Or they, you know, certain little things could happen or it could just be too long of a diet for him. Yeah. You know, so, he's been dieting. He's got to be six months now. Yeah. Indy was early May, right? Yeah. 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 It's already been a while. Um, Abdullah Al Saif, who we saw at the New York Pro, is fourth place. Really good. Really he's good awesome. structure. He's good. He's 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 gonna be he's gonna be a force in the two twelve eventually. Yeah, I, think he's I like work, the way he looks. Every picture I see of him, he looks like he's rock hard. Yeah. And you know, in person, he's not as big as the other guys, but when you see pictures of him alone, he looks plenty big. Yeah. And you know that just tells me he's put together well. He's he's not missing anything. He just needs to add a little bit, and the conditioning's always great. Um, you know, he adds a little more muscle. He's going to be really dangerous. Yeah. And now here's a surprise in fifth place. A gentleman, my man. Both, Ryan Walters from Tennessee. Is that Tennessee, right? Yeah. There yeah. he lives. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, he's come up, he came up to Boston and once trained with us. Yeah. You, you coached him for a while too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. When he was an amateur. Yeah. And uh, Ryan's a great guy. I love him. I yeah. talked to him the other day, actually. And I didn't even know he was doing the show. Me neither. And yeah. He's got to be like 45 at this point. He's no spring chicken. No, he's my age. He, wow. I mean, he, might, he might be a little older than me, like uh, six months older than me. You're 46 now? How old are you now? 47, yeah. 47, okay. But, you know, I, I props to Ryan because I follow him on Instagram, and he's like very close to contest condition all the time. Yeah. Unless these are all throwback pictures. I don't think they are. I, I think he stays lean all the time. And yeah. Delts like coconuts. He's always doing that pose. And yeah. Yeah. That's, Ryan's that's a, got a good personal training and, and uh, coaching business down there. And, you know, it, it certainly doesn't hurt looking the way he looks to get business. Yeah. And he's always been that way. He's, I've always seen him in shape. I've never seen him out of shape. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys. He never trained stupid, like trying to squat 600 pounds, 700 pounds, bench 500 pounds. He just trains what works for him, you know. And I think that's why he's still still doing it because he he got no injuries. That's the most important thing to this whole game is staying healthy. And he's managed to be able to do that. I'm you know, pumped for him. I'm surprised. And I'm, I'm, I'm pumped for him too because these are uh, Tim Gardner shows always have – I don't know if the 212 had a Masters, but like at the Tampa Pro, this had a lot of Masters divisions for the pros too. And if I had seen his name, on, I would have just thought he was doing the Masters. I wouldn't have thought he was doing the Open too. So top five. I'm sure he's real, he'd be real happy to hear that run. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I don't think I've seen him in too many Open shows. He's been a yeah, pro. no, he hasn't competed much. Yeah, because he's been a pro about four or five years at this point, hasn't he? Uh, not quite. Maybe, maybe two Okay. This might be his second year. Okay. Well, he's uh, he look, he look fantastic. He should do another couple. He should keep doing these, these open shows. Why not? He's already... I get thrown off with the pandemic shit. Like, um, I, I forget how many years uh, ago that was. He, it might have been nineteen. He turned okay. pro. Okay, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Pand pandemic time is like <sighs> goes slow. Exactly. Goes, you, even, you can't even calculate anymore. Um, just going to read off some of the other winners. I, unfortunately, I don't recognize a lot of these names. Classic was an Italian gentleman named Emmanuel Riccotti. Not Riccotta like the cheese, but Riccotta. Yeah, I don't I, I had never heard of him. Have you ever heard of him before? No, no. But that's the classic division. That's how it is. Every show I see somebody like, wow, who's that? They're pretty damn good. Uh, yeah. That German dude at the, that we saw in New York Pro, Westermeyer. Never heard of that guy before. Uh, yeah. Men's physique, Clarence McSpadden from Georgia. Women's bodybuilding, we know this woman, Rashana Boswell. Congratulations. She looked fantastic. Fitness, Tamara Vaughn from Canada. Figure, Samantha Jering. Uh, I can't read my own writing where she's from. Wait, what was the name that won the fitness? Tamara Vaughn, V A H N. Oh, okay. From Toronto. Yeah. All right. There, there's only two, two women in fitness. Yeah, fitness is tough. It's tough to get fitness. How many in the women's bodybuilding? There was three, right? Three, yeah. Three. They, you know, they look good. Yeah. The, the three that were there, two of them were really good. The third one was a little softer in the lower body, but she still looked great. Yeah. Julie Fiore. Oh, gosh, I can't pronounce her name. Julie, Julie Forey. 
I know I follow her on Instagram. She was second place. She looked really good. Um, yeah. That was a blonde girl, right? <clears throat> yeah. Bikini, Gabriela Mohammed, women's physique. This is a long one. Claudia Gabriela de Leon Pardo from Mexico. If you're in Mexico, you have to have many names. And finally, wellness, <laughs> no surprise, because she's from Brazil and Brazilians are just kicking ass in wellness. Gisela Machado. Congratulations to all these fine champions. Yeah. So that's fabulous. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we'll wrap it up. Just one more thing. I mean, if, if you're AJ Sims and you're working with Hassan, you're his coach, what would your strategy be? Let's, I know he's got a couple more shows, but let's say there's no more shows until, till December. What would you want to, what would you want him to look like? What, what look would you try for? I mean, I don't know if a body weight or how would you describe the way you'd want to bring this guy to the Olympia, the biggest show in the world? I would probably do the same thing, you know, just suck him down maybe even a little more hmm. and then fill him up, like suck him down early. Hmm. So he looks like that two weeks ago and then slowly bring him back up. So he's not, you know, all depleted and flat the day of the show. Yeah. Cause, cause that version, like that condition in a fuller manner will, will look a lot better. Yeah. You can't, and, and like I said, like, that was flat for Hassan, but that was gigantic for anyone else. Right. So, you know, he, he needed to come in flat to get that look that we've been looking for. Um, but I think he can be a little fuller and look even harder. Yeah. And then it'll be very, very dangerous. Isn't that crazy that you can be the flattest guy on stage, but still the biggest guy on stage because you have that much muscle mass? That's Hassan. <laughs> no question. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good yeah. I'm very he, happy for him. Very happy. He can work on his posing still. There's still a couple. His side chest should be gigantic, mm. but he kind of crunches down when he hits it. Like, yeah. I, you know, there's a few shots that I would like to see him hit bigger. And, um, you know, he's he can beat a lot of good guys. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll just see. Time will tell. I, I think he's in good hands. I think. Um, they did exactly what needed to be done. And I think they'll figure it out. And it'll be even better. Yeah. So congratulations to Sun. AJ Sims, you did a great job with him. Looking forward to seeing what you guys have in store for these next shows coming up soon. And of course, you know, the Olympia is six months away, but that's what everyone's ready for. I didn't even realize how popular this guy was. I knew he was popular, but you know, I did a, I did an interview with him and the views on him, like, geez, he's got a lot of fans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he's sort of a, an enigma because he doesn't speak English that well. At all, at all. And um, he, he doesn't share a lot. Like he didn't tell who his coach was until right. the day of the show, <laughs> till after he won. Yeah. Um, so people are tuning in. They want to get in the mind of Hassan and, and learn more about him. And uh, it's going to take time. Yeah, I wish he would have told me the coach, but he wouldn't. He's like, nope, nope, not till the show. I'm like, oh, come on, dude. Because I was yeah. hearing, I heard George Farah, I heard someone named Hyacinth <laughs> Nasir. Then someone's messaging me saying, bro, I know 100% it's Neil Hill. He's my girlfriend's coach. Girlfriend. So they had all the, they supposedly had all the intel, but nope, they were all wrong. Every single one of these people. Yeah, everyone was thinking it was, it was Farah. Yeah, well, that would make sense. George speaks Arabic and, you know, why not? Yeah. And George was posting on his pictures and stuff. Exactly. But, you know, we didn't know what he was saying because it was he was posting in Arabic. But I assume it was just like, good job, bro. You're looking awesome. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, everyone loves Hassan. And um, everyone's happy for him. I think that's, you know, it, it's closer to what we've been hoping for. I just envision, like, the, the biggest, hardest, craziest guy. And... Um, I think it's coming. Yeah, we, we got to wait a little bit longer. We got to wait. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's going to be exciting. That's going to be that's going to be the Hassan we've been waiting to see for the past three years. Yeah. Uh, since he, I mean that sucked down crazy version of him, but blasting full. Yeah. What would that look like next to Nick Walker? You know, mm -hmm. that's exciting to think about. Be a hell of a pose down because, like I said, you know, there's not that many really massive guys left in the Olympia, not like the old days. So these freaky big guys like Nick Walker and Hassan and Rami, you know, that's, there's still a lot of people that want to see that, but we want to see what the condition too, of course. Anyway. Exactly. Cool. Well, 
That is it. That is a wrap up of the Puerto Rico Pro. Thanks to the Boston Mass, Jose Raymond. And of course, I'm going to get it right this time. I encourage you to download Telegram. Telegram. Uh, Telegram, the app. And of course, Centipani's Circles. Yeah. Whole, whole slew of, I'm going to try to run down against you, Hollingshead, Evan, Flex Lewis, Guy Cicinino. Uh, now I'm starting to miss people. There's like three more guys, right? It's like, it's like nine. Juji Mufu. Juji Mufu. Don Call. Um, Frank McGrath. Yeah. Fuad. Chris Tuttle. Lee Priest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, interact. you can interact live with all these guys on the. Antoine television. Villiers. Yeah. Oh, Antoine. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he's awesome. This is an all star group right there. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some interesting topics. I bet. Stuff you won't see on just uh, any podcast or anything. Mm. Well, you'll have, to, you'll have to get on in, Telegram and find out, guys. And of course, yeah. follow Jose on Instagram at the Boston Mass, T H E E with two E's. Yes. And uh, the website? No, we're still not talking about the website? No, I don't even do anything on there anymore. Okay, fair enough. And of course, if you're in Boston, you want to go to Gym Hub Boston, the best gym in Boston to train. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, equipment. I love it. Well, you might run into Jose there, owner of IPB Pro, Nate Tello. Currently, what's he prepping for right now? Uh, life. Nate's gigantic right now. He's 235. Yeah. Really. I was going to say, yeah. he looks, looks like he's getting, but that he's not getting he's ready. He's so That's... round. It's so crazy. Uh, yeah. he's not, he just doesn't get fat. So he just gets bigger. Nice. And it takes a while, but um, he, you know, he needed to spend time getting this business running he's in there 15 hours a day and it just didn't uh, make sense for him to prep for anything right away i would have loved to see him get ready and do texas or something mm. and then every show that this, this fall is overseas uh, so now it's like we gotta wait till next year so he's probably gonna do like indy or or new york or even boston if they do it again you better do boston pro if they have it come on I, I, I assume he would if they're going to have it, but yeah. we'll see. So I think it's going to be something um, early next year. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because he is looking crazy right now. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. I love he's, it. He's morphing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jose. Guys, thanks okay. for watching another episode of No Way Jose with the Boston Mass. Jose Raymond, appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. See you, buddy. All right, man. Thank you, Jose. You got it.